Hello, everybody. It's uh, Geeks Assemble time. Uh, me and Susan are sitting down to discuss a big movie of the past year, which just recently uh, swooped and took nearly all the Academy Awards from the Oscars. Nearly all. Um, we are talking Christopher Nolan's epic Oppenheimer. Um, sto story of um, J. Robert Oppenheimer, the what shall we call him? The physicist who developed the nuclear bomb back in World War Two. Um, all for the cause of peace, as we should, as uh, that's what the the were hoping for anyway. Um. A very big ensemble cast. Um, a very long movie. And it's what is it over three hours long? Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a story of how it was all created and how the government sort of threw Oppenheimer under the bus after after they used him to win the war. So we'll go over to Susan. We're opening thoughts on Oppenheimer. All right. Well, something from the Veda or Upanishad or something. Uh, now I have become death, the destroyer of worlds. Mm -hmm. um, that's a quote that he that he resonated with. So, yeah, he was. He was amazing man himself. He was uh he fell in love with uh New Mexico and he wanted a place to do physics and do New Mexico. So um basically he he's set up the 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 Manhattan project in his, his own backyard basically on land that he owned. I mean the government eventually owned it because of eminent domain, but you know, in 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 so many real ways it was all about uh Oppenheimer's land. And the story tells the story of, you know, how the the army created that space for him in the government to create this, and how he had team, how he created his team, and. It kind of bounced merrily through his relational thing. I mean, it didn't tell, tell all that much about his personal life. But there were some, you know, once it came time to talk about uh, re, re, uh, recertifying his, um, his top secret, uh, or you know his classified documents um status all of his relational all that relational stuff kind of was hinted at in this movie and um yeah it was just a it was another really awesome per performance by Cillian Murphy. Cillian Murphy is just the bomb. He really is a, an amazing actor. And Emily Blunt, you know. Uh, yeah, that was that was amazing. And uh, also starring. Matt Damon and Robert Downey Jr. and 
uh, the guy who played uh, the guy who played Han Solo. Is in this? Yeah, he he plays a character what's made up. Yeah, true. Never, never existed. Right. But That's more, true. I think a lot of Hollywood movies do that now. Yeah, but but you also <coughs> you tend to tell a story with uh with story points and not with real life sort of historical generated story points because you aren't as uh if you're telling a documentary then you don't have to be worried about that the mm -hmm. the act one act two and act three parts this has got a nice story format it's it's actually kind of interesting what they use to tell the story and i'll get into that later but the the it's just a really brilliant piece about a brilliant man played by a brilliant actor and um yeah so there's my you know repetition in three parts for for this <laughs> podcast because i mean uh in in many ways our podcasts are we do have a three act structure we have a a first part which is the the opening thoughts and then the the middle section which is the Those act the two, which is we're going to put put each other in in a in a world of hurt or we're going to tell a really amazingly empowering story and then the act three is the the anticlimax and that's just where we get to know our our scores and the final say mm -hmm. and our bumps out so we just need to let you know that that we too even though we are a doc we are documenting these things we actually have thought ahead of time for our own structure so yeah yeah, yeah. um okay go on lee opening thoughts opening thoughts i'll just say this i mean you say city and Murphy, you, you've got Emily Blunt has been mentioned, Matt Damon, Robert Downey Jr., Florence Pugh, Josh Hartnett, Casey Alf Affleck, Rami Malek, Kenneth Branagh, um, who else have we got? Tom Conti. Oh, um, God, I just love him so much. He's such an adorable <laughs> man. Politically, he's a nightmare, but he's so cute. Oh, my gosh. Matthew Modine. Um, uh -huh. The list goes on and on. You know, it's a a list of top notch actors. It is. Even in some some well known names, only in sort of small roles, cameo roles. Um, you know, like Jack Quaid is in this. Yeah. Um, Gary Oldman. Uh huh. As as Harry S. Truman. You know. What a, what a great cast to tell a story of what could have gone either way. It, it could have destroyed the world uh -huh. or, or win the war. And luckily enough, it won the war, but he, he had all those lives playing on his conscience. Uh, yeah. So, you know, when, it, when the bomb was dropped... Um, he, uh, and he, he he was striving to to get this right. He wanted it right. He he wanted to this bomb to work, but as soon as it was dropped, his attitudes changed. Which and you could see that in the performance from, um, Cillian. Uh, and then you've got the other other end of the stick with um. Robert Downey Jr. playing Strauss, um, who was like a sort of a puppet master, pulling the strings from behind behind the scenes, yeah, um, creating this kangaroo court to to have the downfall of of Oppenheimer, yeah, uh, you know, because just because. 
he didn't like to be made a fool out of. Right. Oh, well, I'll tell you something. If if <laughs> if that was making a fool out of him, God, God help all the, you know, God help him because he went to really great lengths just to get his own back. Right. Um, and it was a kangaroo court. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know how much of that was true or made up because we'll never know. It uh, well, they they did they did uh go back and forth a lot about his um his personal life mm-hmm. and the 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 connective connective tissue to the communist party. Yeah, so and... this I don't, I don't know much about all this, uh, but was this after the was it the McCarthy? Yeah, thing? it was just post McCarthy. Uh, he was I know, I, I, yeah, I vaguely or, know about or, that, that lot, yeah, yeah, or it was either just before or just after it, anyway. It, it that was the hot button issue, though. Mm. Is that he was? Uh, they thought he was being uh, too closely uh, connected to the communists and the communist party, and and he wasn't. You know, there wasn't. But that was just you were saying that 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 he. They were just bringing up why you know, your friends with so and so. He's part yeah. of the communist. So what? I'm still a. He's a friend. Right. You well, know. that was that was the 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 junkiness of that whole time is that you were forced to take sides. Take sides and forced to remove your friendships. It was horrible, and you know. Any more are, I mean, our conservative uh, people are still are still tripped up by that, and mm-hmm. the the emotional maturity of the the Republicans hasn't hasn't. In, hasn't improved they still believe that if you're if your friends you know if you're friends with folks like like at that time it was Che Guevara and Castro because it was before before Kennedy mm-hmm. if you were friends with them before if you are friends with them then you you're not um you're not you're not being true to the country and you're not you know you're not honoring that and it's just ridiculous because the the country is is only improved by folks being of diverse mindsets especially when you've got geniuses behind it you know? yeah, it I mean, it's a very complicated movie. This, yeah, it's um, with Oppenheimer and his his wandering eye for the ladies. Yes. Um, which his wife was his wife Kitty. Oh, what's that? <laughs> I mean, we still have we st- the, He's a. He's a democratic socialist who ru- who runs with all the Democrats anyway. But he'll be better. He'll be best known for that for that photograph, sat there with his gloves on. Yeah, the the, the <laughs> little mittens. <laughs> yeah, his mittens. Um, oh my gosh, it was so cool. Uh, yeah. So the, but the <laughs> the the reality of. Uh, of the bomb of what they were doing and how they didn't want it to to be you know used against folks mm. 
but yet they they weren't they weren't going to sabotage the their own work. You see, this is it. it, it it's it's the nuclear r- race, right? Uh, as was the space age race. Uh huh. Americans two, wanted to be two decades later. Yeah. Almost, they, almost in parallel. Almost you know, exactly they, parallel. Theme. I mean, it was mostly thought. It was mostly thought the same right. in, in Soviet Russia that they've got to beat the Americans. The Americans would think we've got to beat the Russians in the nuclear powered and also with the space age. They we've got to be in get on the moon, we've got to be in first in space. It was it was just like being in a playground. Mm-hmm. A big, big grown up playground. <laughs> yes. For the two well, you know, to, to these two countries' governments. Right. Uh, and, and they uh you know where the right stuff talks about that space race. This mm-hmm. Oppenheimer talks about the other, the other, the nuclear race, and yeah. you, you, we like to have sort of uh, not only documentaries, not only you know nonfiction stories, but this this has a narrative quality to it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's an amazing movie to watch. The cinema, the, the the cinematic. You know, with the because he's 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 dreaming, he's having these visions mm-hmm. of fusion and uh, and you know all like that, and and then also when they do test the bomb, that's so that that part of the movie where it's out out in the out in the desert in the, on that built platform, and it's raining, it, it's windy. And they're just waiting for that right time just to drop the bomb to test it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very you, you're watching it and you think, "Oh, I've got to breathe here." <laughs> you, you're getting involved with it, and you think, "Oh, breathe, breathe," because <laughs> it's 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 one of those moments. And then when they do drop it, all the all the all the army are just laid there with those little. Um, or what do you call them? Visors. Well, like the the things that they they put in welding masks. Yeah, I think wow, that's not gonna that's not gonna uh, stop radiation. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're all like that, and there's one of them in it, sat in a deck chair with some sunscreen on or whatever it is. Yeah. What? <laughs> they really didn't understand nuclear um, fallout, Fallen. and really didn't. Um, and I, I was just when I was watching it, I was wondering how many of those people, the real people, what was uh-huh. it that died of radiation poisoning? Oh, I don't know. That that is there. You go. That's a good question. Yeah, because I bet it's a big number. Yeah, that's so too. I mean, I also like the way they the built that um, the 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 town. What was it called? Al. The Alamo, was it? Uh, Los Alamos. Los Alamos, um, like it was like a, a nuclear town, wasn't it? Yeah. Because as as uh, his wife walks into their house, there's no kitchen. <laughs> Typical, being built by a man in government, not putting yeah. a kitchen. I know, it's true. But. It was like, um, but didn't they have the kitchen, uh, for everyone in that? Like, like, a, uh, like, yeah, because that it was the army who built it. Yeah, and so, and that was that was the thought was that these these folks would not have private meals together, uh, private mm-hmm. meals that they would have to eat together because they wanted the most the maximum interaction time. As, as they've they've got sort of their compartmentalized thing but if you were going bringing, on. If you were bringing your families, which they did, with their children, right? You you would need, you know, your own space, wouldn't you? You wouldn't. They didn't think so. They thought that the the max that the most interaction with family and kids and with the other scientists would would create the best work. 
-hmm. and and they should have done that with the space race and they and and they should continue to do that with Boeing and things like that right now because the the discom the discompartmentalization discompart of current uh scientific and and ind industrial creation is actually making you know human error and and kind of uh hiding things non-transparency uh seemingly uh a problem because there's only two creative uh company companies actually in the the market making aircraft right now and one is french it's airbus and canadian uh regional jets uh uh also as a as a subsidiary of airbus and then um boeing and boeing's subsidiary the 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 ones making the 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 the, short, the smaller and shorter jets uh citations and things so there are two yeah and they should be working in teams with with open doors rather than well, well Oppenheim did have open doors. He, that's he what was... I'm saying is that it worked really well, and that's yeah. that's why they didn't provide kitchens. I I was watching documentaries about this, yeah. and, I mean, and he, they he... wanted them together. Yeah, uh, he had open doors with all these scientists mm -hmm. um, from all over the world. Yeah, um, it was amazing. That was such an easy target for um, Strauss oh. to you know, pick out and think, right, all these people from all over the world, that you know, there's a spy, there's this, that, they were, you know, leaking it to the Russians. Um, he was a nasty piece of work with Strauss. Um, yeah. Really well played by Robert Downey, and really, really well-deserved Oscar win for him, though. Yeah. Um, as with Cillian, with his, his Oscar win as well. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I just building building that town, and they did them all over the place. Don't they? These nuclear towns with these testing, um, amazing. Uh, you just it was different times when you when you watch this, you think this is how they did it. You know, I mean, we think now technology is so high, highly advanced that. <laughs> They were just they were just play, they were just uh, using paper glue and string to, mm -hmm. back then, weren't they? They were. <laughs> yeah. They were using marbles to show the amount of uh, of fissionable material uh -huh. uh, in in what was it like a like a fishbowl, mm -hmm. and so that that was like a demonstration. I that may have been done just for the movie, but I kind of like that visualization of this is how much this is how much uranium 232 yeah. we've we've created yeah. uh the and you know the the uranium 236 i think the bigger that that's that's the stuff you find in nature yeah but they have to you know take find a way of using in, in a cyclotron blasting those other two uh two neutrons away and po those other two neutrons and uh protons oh, oh, off the off the um off the atom so that the electrons become more plasma yeah i i you know that that's as far as i know that that's what they do and that takes a lot of time to create a little bit of material, a lot of energy to create a little bit of material. I mean, I know um, the scenes with, watch this, folks, when I mentioned the word, the name Tom Conti. Uh-huh. Oh, he's so cute. 
<laughs> and he's so um, cute as Einstein. He, he is, but as far as I know, I might, I might be wrong, but as far as I know, most of them scenes were made up. I don't um, think so. I think Oppenheimer and Einstein became friends after yeah. the the uh, the bomb was dropped. Yeah, and Strauss never or Strauss never yeah. never forced the two to have a conversation on which he became jealous. Yeah, I, I do know that Oppenheimer and Einstein were friends afterwards, up, up to uh, Einstein's death in nineteen fifty-five, I think it was. Yeah. So, but as you say, they just played about a bit. Put that put them scenes, brilliant scenes. Yeah, that uh, was that was a good scene. And and I knew I knew straight away when I saw it was Tom Conti. I just knew huh? that Susan would. <laughs> Well, I can't. I can't really help it. There are some British actors who I find absolutely stinking adorable. <laughs> I mean, absolutely stinking adorable, mm-hmm. like Steve Coogan, like Tom Conti, who, who, you know, his Einstein is believable. I mean, uh-huh. he's excellent. You know, he's been excellent with, uh, with an affected accent. Uh, ever since Shirley Valentine, oh and yeah, Ruben Ruben. Uh, but yeah, just just fun. The the accent, the adoption of of Einstein's accent was great, and um, the 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 placement of his uh, you know, his placement of you know having to confront. Uh, confront Oppenheimer with like the fact that he, you may just start uh, a cascading, a nuclear cascade, I think is what they call it, where all of the particles in the planet would be caught up in this. I mean, they were, he was really, uh, you know, the two of them really kind of had to sort of, uh, at least posit the notion that that this would completely destroy everything along the the round part of the planet yeah i don't you know i don't know why why it didn't but i don't know anything about quantum physics uh, you know i my physics aptitude ends at acoustics and and um Little astrophysics that I took with with Sachiko Saruto of the Japanese space program, who was teaching at at Montana State you, University. You know more than I do. The <laughs> I just I just was I was interested in it. I I I started the university my university studies in physics and music, and ended up trying to marry them kind of in in film and television production. Little optics, little acoustics, little, um, you know, and then a, a love for astrophysics due to Carl Sagan and uh, now, you know, Brian Cox and, and Neil deGrasse Tyson. I mean, you just can't you just can't win when you look at Doctor Who's uh, main uh, scientific advisor. Not, not the doctor, but Doctor Cox. You know, he's he's amazing. Anyway, so there, there is one scene in the movie. What, and it's only a small scene. Uh, where you get, where I went, oh wow, and and it's it's Gary Oldman, um, as as Truman. Truman. Um, I mean. The scenes only must be what five minutes long, if that. Mm-hmm. Um, where Oppenheimer says to him, "I've got blood on my hands," mm-hmm. and then you see in Truman's face or Gary Oldman's face, you think you know you think that you created this, that your name, you've got blood in your hands because you created this. History will not remember you. 
to remember the person who dropped the bomb, which was me, which is right. Uh, you know, he was the one who made the decision to drop it. So he's gone down in history as the, as the president, what, you know. Use uh, the books. Yeah. Yeah. And that, 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 that short scene, I, I mean, for me, I mean, I think Gary Oldman, Gary Oldman can't do anything wrong. It, whatever movie he's in, be it a big, big uh, performance or a small performance like this. Mm -hmm. Um it was just that that scene there. I thought, oh, wow, <laughs> a little speech like that, and it just put. And then when Oppenheimer says about the the town, give it give it back to the uh, the Indians. Yeah. Wow, the look on uh, Truman's face. Yeah. It was a sort of disgust. Uh huh. Um, that that short scene was. I mean, I mean, it's about nearly three and a half hour long movie, but that short scene just stuck stuck in my head. <laughs> yeah, and Los Alamos National Laboratory is is a is a continuation. It it it's a it's a project that never ended. So they they still have a a, a community there, and they still have a, a laboratory there that is part of the the national. You know our national scientific is the, endeavors. Is the land still, you know, got radiation? Yeah, there's the... still there's still places in Nevada and 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 Arizona and New Mexico that have the Trinity site is still. I mean, because uh, some of those things, you know, have longer half life than others, you know. And okay. that's they did they. Did, you know the, the plutonium bomb and the uranium bomb and the and then they did some other testing uh, in Nevada. They have a Nevada nuclear test site uh, that was different from the Trinity site and different from the the uh, Arizona sites. So yeah, I mean it was down by by. Uh, Las Vegas. Yeah. So I mean like yeah, there's there's issue there's issues and like the 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 team that worked there, you know, kept kept working there. I think that the reason that, that they couldn't keep Oppenheimer there all of his life was because of his the, secu the security away. clearance. Yeah. yeah. And you know that that trial. Okay, you said that you really that that scene with Truman that that was that was your scene. Uh, the scene that I noticed that was really intense was the scene with uh, Oppenheimer, where he ends up, you know, sitting there naked before the the you know the tribunal, basically. Uh, the kangaroo court, as you've as you've said, um, and the fact that his wife figured out through, you know, through that that confrontation that he was completely unfaithful to her with this woman who he'd been in a relationship with much longer than he'd known uh, Kitty. Yeah. Uh, played was that played by Florence Pugh, wasn't it? Florence Pugh, yeah. Which the character, they, according to you know Oppenheimer, believes that she committed suicide, but yeah. in the scene, but in the scenes, her head was held under the water. Yeah. So that was the that was the government, the FBI, whoever. Right. Getting rid of loose ends. Yeah. Everything's corrupt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. Anyway, it was it was intense, and uh, mm -hmm. that was. I mean that that scene was incredibly unnerving. I mean, 
Murphy played it perfectly. And he didn't have to, you know, it didn't have to be for the camera, but it had to be for his wife. Yeah. A revelation. And for the for the kangaroo court, a revelation. Amazing. Mm. It's an amazing movie. I mean, after, you know, after uh, Christopher Nolan did um, that movie, Tenet, yeah, uh, which I absolutely loved and hated. Um, I thought, where's he going to go from there? Because I thought he's gone, he's gone too far with that movie and disappeared up his own ring piece. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> he's just lost track of what he was doing. But come to come back with this movie, now I've got to think, where's he going to go from this? <laughs> I know. All this success, where's he gonna go? Right. It, uh, it's uh, I, I I don't know if there's anything being he's put out what he's gonna do next, like. But how do you follow Oppenheimer with all the awards, all the acclaim, with the with the, with the Oscars in in yeah. in the pocket? Yeah, that was amazing. We didn't, well, we knew we we knew they were gonna win anyway because. Over here we have the um, is it the BAFTA? BAFTAs, the British version of the Oscars. Yeah, the BAFTA, which usually happens about two weeks before the Oscars takes place. Uh-huh. So if if you're going to win it, if you're going to win at the BAFTAs, usually you're going to win at the Oscars. All right. Did Parasite win? Uh, well, that was a few years ago. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just wondering. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, but I know Robert Downey won the best supporting actor for, for BAFTA. BAFTA for Oppenheimer over here. And, uh, you know, Cillian won the, I think, well, it's, it's a dead set now when it comes to the Oscars. Okay. The All right. Down, you know. Oh, okay. So, so, anything else we can think of about Oppenheimer? Um, No, it was. <laughs> really incredible like I've, I've and i have i've been doing you know i i've been wa- watching and listening to a whole bunch of books about kennedy and about you know the space race but this yeah. the, just this just adjusted that whole time frame back mm-hmm. about 20 years and i it gave me a whole new perspective on the on on the lay of the land and who was doing what when. You know, yeah. the presidential thing also, like Truman Truman kind of uh because he wasn't elected, he was just he just came right after uh Roosevelt. You know, was he like the vice president then? He was the vice president, oh. and so when Roosevelt died, the yeah. end of the war, or towards the end of the war, Truman just took his place. Mm-hmm. You know, what a decision to make, though. I know, I know, Maybe. and, and it's gone down, down in history. I know, so good. Mm-hmm. Right then. So yeah, I I will give this uh I'll give this ten uh ten marbles of fission material in in a fishbowl out of ten. Ooh. Well, I'm gonna give this uh well it, it's for you people out there, it is a very, very long movie. Mm. Um, but it's not gonna. That's not gonna go against my scoring here because it is so. It, it draws you in, and you just you're watching everything what everybody does and says in this movie. Um, so for that reason, I'm gonna give this ten cold fusion bombs out of ten. See, I went, I, went, I went technical there. I used cold fusion. Mm-hmm. There you Ooh. go. Yeah. 
I don't know what it means. <laughs> oh, but but you do because you've listened to the audio that talks about it a little bit. I know you have. So, <laughs> so that's that. That's our review of a a masterpiece. I would say of of movie making. Um, God knows where Christopher Nolan is going to go next. Um, he may he may surprise us, and he might do a comedy. Who knows? Um, but no, there again, Tenant was a comedy. Um, Tenant was sort of. It was awful. Um, yeah. So you guys out there, if you've seen Hoppenheimer, let us know what you thought of the movie. Um, just leave a message below. You'll find this video on all um, social media platforms, X, Facebook, YouTube, um, the link on Insta. Um, please leave a message below. Um, leave a message below if you want to be part of the you know the team. If you want to join us talking um, like we are doing now, uh, just say, I would like to join. Um, all you have to be is 18 plus. Um, have a working camera and, and microphone on the device you use. And um, if you do subscribe to our YouTube channel, make sure you've um, got the bell notification button pressed and you'll get notified every time we put a video up. Is that it? I think that's it, isn't it? That's it. You, you, you covered everything. Thanks. We covered everything. So now we're bathed in the light of uh, the, nu <laughs> the nuclear fallout. <sighs> what? <laughs> I'd, I'd love to know. I'm going to look that up, see how many people at those experiments did get uh, radiation. Yeah. Because I bet you it's most of them. I don't even know. Yeah. So, yeah, tell me when you find out, will you? I will do. Don't you Thanks. worry about that? And so, until next time, guys, be safe. Because <laughs> you, you don't want to be at the end of the, one of these. So, take care now.